Rumor has it that AP4 hardware is in development. Elon drops a new tidbit about the new Roadster, and we get an update on two different lawsuits against Tesla. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 615, recorded for August 19th, 2020. This show is sponsored by my supporter, Richard. If you're in the market for a new Tesla, please consider using his referral code. Ask your salesperson to use code Richard174 or go direct to the web link ts.la Richard174 and pick up a 1,000 mile supercharging credit for your new vehicle. Up first on the agenda today is a rumor about potential new autopilot hardware coming from Tasmania. Tasmanian reports that the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, here on known as TSMC, announced that a new high-performance computing chip developed jointly between Tesla and Broadcom will be using their 7 nanometer chip production process, beginning with an initial production batch of 2,000 chips in Q4 this year. Full production isn't expected to be reached until Q4 of next year, according to the article. Unfortunately, the article is light on details here, and I'm actually fairly skeptical on this. Firstly, Tesla went and designed their own silicone for a reason with Hardware 3. They were held back by both Mobileye and NVIDIA from advancing the technology in the way that they wanted, and in typical Elon fashion, he just said, fine, we'll do it ourselves. I can't imagine Elon wanting to tether the future of Tesla again to another company that may hinder progress toward the goal. Additionally, we also know that Tesla has a whole team dedicated to chip design and development, which he even tweeted about and promoted as recently as last week. Why you'd then go and pay another company to help design something that this team should be responsible for is baffling. This isn't to say that Tesla isn't working with Broadcom to develop something, just not related to autopilot. Remember, Broadcom is a chip company known primarily for its prowess with networking, communications buses such as PCIe, and storage controllers. It's conceivable that they're doing something related to Wi-Fi, 5G, or who knows, maybe even something with Starlink in the cars, as my Twitter follower Paul Kelly pointed out. Regardless, color me absolutely gobsmacked if they announce a partnership for any chips powering autopilot at any time in the future. Item 2 today is a fun one that has us visiting the comedy department again for the first time in a while. Elon jumped in on a conversation discussing the complexity of the Raptor engines produced by SpaceX when Twitter user Space Intelligence said, quote, Old engineers saying, what holds with four screws holds with three too, end quote. Elon responded to this saying, quote, My favorite one is in tension, other DOF in compression. New Roadster wheels will only have one nut, end quote. This followed with Twitter user Zubin Anari asserting, quote, Center locking F1 style nuts require a huge torque wrench and a huge nut, about 70 millimeters or more. Will one come with the new Roadster? And will all service centers have one available that can torque the single nut to specs over 300 plus pound feet, end quote. Elon's awesome reply to this was, quote, yes, it will have huge nuts. Ha ha, end quote. <laughs> Folks, I love a good dad joke, and I seriously laughed out loud when I read this. So yet another tidbit for the Roadster, which we've not seen in a very long time. Granted, Cybertruck and Semi likely both have priority, so no need to tease something nobody can own for a while yet. The third item today comes courtesy of Whole Mars Catalog on Twitter. This one takes a little bit of setup to explain for those that might be newer, so stick with me for a moment. Back in 2018, Nikola Motors, a startup company aiming to produce semi-trucks fueled by a hydrogen fuel cell or by batteries, depending on the model, sued Tesla for violating patents held by Nikola in the design of the Tesla Semi. The lawsuit alleged that because of these design similarities, Nikola Motors had been damaged in the amount of $2 billion worth of lost business. Fast forward to more recently, when Nikola Motors was taken to task by a Bloomberg article claiming that when its flagship vehicle was revealed in 2016, it was not actually a functional vehicle, though the article says it was implied by founder and executive chairman Trevor Milton during the event that it was. Many Tesla fans have since been hammering Milton on Twitter about whether any of its products or the factory it intends to build are actually real products that will operate. Milton took this opportunity to invite several prominent Tesla supporters from Twitter for a tour of Nikola's headquarters, including a ride in its Nikola 2 semi-truck. Among them was Holmar's blog, who took the opportunity to ask Milton what it would take from Tesla to drop the lawsuit. From his tweet, quote, Nikola wants a 2-3% to royalty on every Tesla semi sold to drop the lawsuit, end quote. To say that's a hefty price is a bit of an understatement, although it's certainly possible Milton is emboldened by a court decision that Nikola won back in April where Tesla failed in a bid to invalidate the patents that are the subject of the lawsuit. Patent law is a strange world, though, so this is far from over. In a best-case scenario for Tesla, everything ends up thrown out or Tesla proves how it implements the functions differently and wins the suit. 
Worst case, Tesla either will indeed owe those royalties, or will have to completely redesign the infringing parts before releasing the vehicle for sale. I'll stay tuned to continue to bring you the latest on this one. Speaking of lawsuits, another one of the big ones has finally been cleared from the docket. In our last story today, Teslarati reports that a long-standing shareholder lawsuit from the acquisition of Solar City in 2016 has been settled to the tune of $60 million and an additional $16.8 million in legal fees. According to the article, the suit came because the plaintiffs believe that Tesla executives, quote, breached their fiduciary duties to Tesla shareholders by simply allowing Musk to go through his personal intentions to purchase Solar City, which was in rough straits at the time, end quote. As Elon was the largest shareholder in Solar City at the time of the acquisition, the argument was that the buyout improperly benefited Elon, his cousins who were the co-founders of the company, and multiple Tesla directors that also held shares in Solar City. While this will dent Q3 financials significantly, it's not the end of the world, and it's another distraction out of the way to, for Tesla to continue crushing it as the world's leading EV manufacturer. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks to all my patrons supporting the show at patreon.com slash tesla tidbits, including my newest patron, Tyler Corsair. Thanks for your support, Tyler. And as always, a special shout out to all the super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They're Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Todd Sullivan, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Vicky Kirk, Ricky Johnston, Nathan Garza, Ed Patterman, Sunil Joseph, Joy Rodriguez, and Brad Lettner. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road.